Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it is a yes it's a trying to fix video so just in case anybody misunderstood or didn't watch the whole of my channel going forward video I'm still intending to do trying to fix videos just not as frequently as I have been over the past two years for the exact reasons I gave in that video there so they're not going to go anywhere I'm still hoping to do at least one a week and if Patreon does okay, then it will possibly be two a week. So now, Patreon, I need everybody to understand that you're not going to miss out on anything by not doing Patreon. All my videos are still going to be on YouTube. They're not going to be hidden behind a paywall. What you will get by doing Patreon is possibly it will allow me to do an extra video a week because if I get enough Patreons, then it's worth my while to spend more time on the trying to fix videos. That's going to enhance, help everybody that likes the videos, not just the people that decide to uh, pledge on Patreon. Also, what the Patreons will get is things like advert free for maybe the first week, uh, name up in credits if you go up the tiers, and there's another tier that will do like a shout out type thing. So uh, you don't have to do Patreon, you're not gonna miss out on anything, and I need everybody to understand this. I only want you to do Patreon because regardless, even if nobody does it, I'm still going to try and do at least one trying to fix video a week. If, uh, with, with the Patreon, only do it if you can comfortably afford it. I am not hard up whatsoever and I really mean that. I've made the changes to my channel now so that then I don't run into problems in the future. So if, for example, you're struggling with money whatsoever, don't be silly enough and give money to me because I am not struggling for money. I work incredibly hard and all my other videos will bring in money. What the Patreon will allow is it will allow me to do more trying to fix videos without being upset about the fact that they might only get 15 or 20 or 25 or 30,000 views and they might have taken me two or three days to do. That's all it will allow. So please, 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 please only subscribe if you want the benefits of what Patreon offer. You're not gonna miss out if you're any bit hard up for money at all. There's no paywall going up. So now, that's that's that done. So here we go, it's all, uh, it's all ready to go here. So maybe if you're interested, take a little time and look at that there. Now, for those of you that need more fixes in their life, I'm gonna recommend two channels to you. These are subscribers to me, they comment on my videos, and uh, one in particular has offered me help uh, a number of times, that's Decoder. So let me just quickly flash up these two ones here, and then if you have a bit of time, maybe take a bit of time out of your day, check out their channels, you might like them. If, uh, if you do, you don't have to shout me out because these guys already know who I am anyway, and uh, they will probably be watching this video and then realize where the extra subscribers come from if you do wish to subscribe. So the first one here is a bit of a mouthful for me to say, but it's Stez Sticks. And basically, he does very similar stuff to what I do, which is just trying to fix things. So again, not an expert, just trying his best to try to do various different things. You've got Game & Watch here, you've got a Dingbot, a Bose Soundlink speaker. So if you like the trying to fix videos, maybe check out his content. I enjoy watching his videos and I'm sure you will too. Now, the other one that uh, I want to mention is the Coder. Now, the Coder does, uh, he's a, a more technical, so he actually does this for a living, repairing consoles and stuff and he is wanting to get to 5,000 subscribers, I believe by Christmas, I think he said. So do your best if you can, subscribe, bump that number up for him a little bit. Let's see if we can get him to 5,000 subscribers, that would be amazing. And uh, I think he's doing a giveaway off a of PlayStation 4 at 5,000 subscribers. And basically, if you have a look here, Sorry, I'm filming a screen, I know it's awful. Uh, but if you have a look here, you can see here, like for example, Xbox One X, no power to disk drive, missing 12 volt rail, and I think it was something on the daughter board as well. Nintendo Switch only charges one side, that must be off the USB. Uh, he's done a console, uh, the, the workshop here, a workshop tour. So again, if you like, like, well, these ain't so much trying to fix videos, these are more fixing videos, but especially if you like the modern consoles, check it out because that's what he's doing for a living. So go and give a little bit of support. And he's actually got my name mentioned up here. These are other channels if you don't already know, which you probably will, but these are all channels you're gonna enjoy. Obviously myself, don't forget about me. Uh, Chris from Gadget UK, great 
information and also lots of info on uh, especially the older retro consoles. Uh, Lewis Rosman needs no introduction, mostly Apple repairs. Andrew Paul is absolutely amazing, doesn't make as much videos now as he used to but still a great source of information, PlayStation 4, Xbox, check out his channel, he talks things through bit by bit and you'll understand every single thing. And of course Steve from Tronix Fix down here, you're all going to know who he is if you know my channel here. So uh, yeah, that is it. Now anyway, let's get on with the actual main event, which is this trying to fix video. Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix up these inverters here. So I'm with my brother Paul, we're around his house. Apologies for the weird camera angle, I actually forgot to bring my tripod and I haven't got as much lighting as normal, but hopefully it will still be viewable. So basically what an inverter is, is it allows, for example, a battery, a 12 volt battery, to go into it and then it allows you to have mains of voltage out. So we're going to have 12 volts going in and 230 or 240 volts out. Now obviously these don't generate energy so you're going to have to quite have quite a big battery to have a small amount of power out of the uh, 240 volts. Now with these ones here, so I suppose it would be useful for when you're out and about or maybe if you're into your I don't know, like camping or something like that, and you're somewhere where you haven't got access to electricity, but, for example, you can carry a battery around, although it's a very, very, very heavy battery to be able to get anything worthwhile out. Now, we're not going to get too involved with the sums because we're probably only going to get that wrong. But basically, these will allow 600 watts out at 240 volts. So now, let's say if your battery was... 12 volts in, to get to 240 volts, you've got to times that by 20. So if your battery was able to do 100 amps at 12 volts, then what's that going to allow out at 240 volts? So that's going to be 20... Uh, 5. So that's going to allow 5 amps out. At, or, or, Yes, ish, ish, yes, but, but, ish, but not there's other factors. And also, these lose energy because of the heat yes. generated in them. Yeah, yeah. So you can see, even with a 12 volt battery at 100 amps, roughly you're going to get 240 volts at 5 amps. Uh, so you're not going to be able to power anything that's too, too, too powerful. But anyway, it doesn't matter about that. With these ones here, these are only going to be doing 600 watts. So 600 watts is going to be around about 2.5 ish amps. Uh, 240, yeah, 480, yeah, yeah. yeah about two, uh, two and a half amps out. So the problem with these ones are, I'm going to let my brother explain what the problems are. I think this one works, it's just that the LEDs, the power light doesn't come on. That's it, yes. Yeah. And this is the one you normally use, this one or this one? That one. This one here. And so you have been using it and it's been fine and then it just stopped working. Yes. And then you looked inside and all three fuses were blown. There's three 25 amp fuses in it. Uh, they seem to be in parallel and they've all blew together. And they're like car blade fuses. They are, yes. Yes. And so you borrowed this one off someone else. Yes. You turned it on and straight away well, it smoke. Went bang. It went bang, smoke came out. Of yeah. It. So you've had a look inside this one yeah. and what looks like some sort of transistor has fried. Yes. And then you took the fuses out of this one because you thought it might be just an issue with the fuses. Yeah. You put the fuses in here and all three fuses blew, blew again. Instantly. Yes. So basically, we're going to be trying to fix up three. These two, although they've got different stickers on, look like they come from the same factory and they're both 600 watts. So hopefully, the inside might be similar. They're Nikkei. So Nikkei. So maybe we might be able to take components out of one to put into another to get one working out of two. And with this one, we'll just have a, a little look at the power light. But it doesn't really matter about this one because it still works anyway. Yes. Yes, yeah. So which one should we start with? Should we open up both of these? Okay. And see what's happening with them? Yeah. Yeah, right. So we're just going to take them apart now to get inside. There's four screws at the bottom. And also it looks like there's screws at the front and the back as well. It's like a metal case. The bottom just comes off. Do you not have to take the front and back? No. No, okay. Right, so this is the one which, uh, is this the blown fuse, this one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you can see three 25 amp fuses up here, and uh, 
so what else we got a couple of transformers some big capacitors there so we've got the 12 volts coming in here on the massive cables because remember we're going to have high current on the 12 volts what are these things these are they look like heat shrinks on some sort of uh, mosfets or transistors i think and they're just clamped to here the, the metal case it must be to dissipate the heat okay we've got some chips down here and that one looks like it's socketed as well which is a little bit unusual for a new product I think right okay so there's something something wrong on here uh, which is causing the fuses to blow instantly so I'm wondering if that's just going to be a short between the, the live and the neutral so we'll check that in a minute and let's have a look at this one and this is the one you said there was one of the component th loose inside it somewhere there it is oh little oh here we go oh that is a tiny little uh, transistor. So if you have a look here you can see just a little remains of a transistor. You don't know where this went. Oh it's a big it burnt yeah. thing here. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it just uh, just here. Yeah. So the layout does seem to be the same. The layout does seem to be the same between them. Right now would a transistor just fail like that? I wonder is it a case of just replacing the transistor or has something caused the transistor to fail? Oh, also look here, Paul. It's burnt out here as well. There's some sort of diode that's burnt out. Oh there. yes, yeah. Yeah. So if you, so also it's not just a transistor here. There's also a burn down here, which may be some kind of diode or something. I'm not sure which one to start on first. Right, just to show you closely here. See, there's not just one component that's first. So we've got the transistor. We've got some sort of other diode or something just underneath there. I don't know. Or or. I'm not sure what that could be, but again, that's not over here. And if you have a look at these things, can you see that that middle one is cracked? So even if we were to replace that, the transistor, and that unknown component there, realistically, is, is there going to be something else which caused them to fail? Or has one thing, one of these failed, which has knocked out the other two things? I'm wondering if we should fault find this one, because at least this one is just blowing the fuses. And then if we can find out what the rest of it looks intact but obviously there is a problem but if we can find out what the problem component is we might be able to take it from this one here i'm thinking that this there's going to be too much i think there's going to be too much to fix on this one and even if we replace those three components i still think there's going to be other things wrong with that so i'm thinking we're going to be working on this one i've got a feeling that this one here is going to be a lost hope but i might be able to get the components from here to fix this one up but I think we need to get this board out now you can see the three fuses these blade fuses just slot in here in line going across that way there and every one of these have blown if you have a look there in the middle you see a little crack there it's hard to see the camera but they're all blown you can see clearly on that one so if we have a look we've got like the let's call them transistors on this side here but we also have them on this side here so I'm wondering if some are input and some are output and uh, if you have a look here, so we've got the inputs for the battery here, so we've got the positive and the negative, and the positive terminal here is connected to this side of the fuse blade connection here. So I was hoping that this side was going to be shorted to the, uh, the negative, but unfortunately it's not. So if we get the multimeter, and if we just go between here, so that's the positive, just got on continuity, and these ones here, you will hear that it will make a sound. But then if we go onto this one here, it's not doing anything at all. And then if we go to the negative here, you can hear that, uh, okay, it came up for a second there, but I think that might be just a capacitors or something. But you see it's not coming up there. And to go onto this side here, it's not there. So it looks like the, I was hoping that that was gonna be shortened, you know, to blow the fuse. But uh, I'm just worried now, thinking that maybe it has to be powered in order to, to get the fault. For me, that would just be, unfixable because I wouldn't want to be tampering with this when there's power going through it because anyway the fuse is going to blow instantly anyway. So I think what we need to do is take the board out and give us a better chance of fixing it. Right, so at long last that's out and it only took a little cut to the finger to uh, get it out. So what we're going to do now is just put three new fuses in. Obviously we're not going to turn it on because these fuses will just blow instantly. These are 25 amp each but hopefully it might make the testing, testing easier. Where the positive comes in it goes to this side here and then it jumps to fuse over to this side and this goes all the way down here. So all this area here is positive. So I'm thinking about just possibly going between the positive 
and then seeing where the, the negative is and just seeing whether there's any shorts anywhere just with the multimeter. It's interesting how there's three 25 amp fuses in parallel so that as, as if the current's going through one equally that would be like a 75 amp in total isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I presume that these don't come in seventy five amps, so they've put Oh just put three of these yes. instead because it's cheap. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So they they if one goes, they all go. Yeah. Oh of course, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now we're just thinking about this fuse situation here. So if it was done for cheapness rather than having to get, for example, a seventy five amp fuse, I wonder why they didn't just use two forty amp fuses, which would have been cheaper again than having three of these because you're not going to get one fail are you because like you said if you get one no fail, because one fails they'll go to the others and they'll fail as well instantly because they're all just attached they're all just in parallel to each other yeah so i'm wondering unless of course they didn't want i really don't know why so, yeah because you could have had you could have had a uh, a 40 maybe it's a blow time maybe the 25 amp yeah because if, if they would, wanted 75, they could have had a 40 and a 35. They could, but maybe it's the blow time. Maybe the 25 amps would blow that bit quicker to give protection. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Right, so we're going to be just setting the meter to continuity and just having a little look around the place to see if we can find any shorts. Right, so this is all right here, yeah. section is here. Right, so this is all. That doesn't look right there, does it? It's any flux. Just it, around is it the not, edge. Is it crossing the yeah the bridge? No, it's yeah. not. No. no. Sisters, aren't they? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, that one's doing something different than the others. Okay. Look. Nothing. Nothing. Something. Something. So when it comes to these transistors here, these four are the same and these eight are the same. These are different than these ones. These four are IRF740 and these ones are IRFZ44V. Now, just a quick test. This is just on continuity, but with my meter it does give a, uh, a resistance test as well on continuity. These seem to be okay just from a quick test, but on these ones, Two of them are different than the other two. So for example, if we uh, flip it over here, we have three contacts. And if you have a look, when my meter is set to continuity, if I was to put the red lead in the middle and go to here and here, nothing happens. And on this one, nothing happens. But then on this one, can you see we've got a 24 ohm short there, which isn't the full short. And we've got a full short there, 0.8 ohm and here we've got 14 ohm and here 13 ohm so I don't know it could be something else in the circuit causing it but remember these are the same make and they're the same orientation so that there's the, the same transistor yet they're doing something different so I think rather than waste time checking anything out 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 else on the circuit I think it might be worth because I think these do work in pairs so I think it might be worth just unsoldering all four of these and testing them out to see if they're measuring the same out or not and then we can eliminate them. Now obviously do your soldering on something safe. Again, I, uh, I woke up too early today and I forgot my soldering mat, forgot my tripod. You woke up at midday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, so I've come, I'm not very prepared today. So I'm just doing it on a little tin here just in case any solder drops. 
I'm just putting a load of lettuce sold on it to begin with just to make it easier to come off to lower the melting temperature. Okay, so we've got all four out now. These two are the faulty ones, and these two are what I think are the good ones. So let's just get the multimeter. And let's go to... I'll tell you what, let's just go to continuity again, because we had full shorts before, didn't we? So now, let's just have a look here. If you could just hold that for me there, Paul. So we've got a short between there and there. Let's just see if that's the same on this one. Yeah. And now let's see if it's the same on the ones that I think are good. These might not be faulty at all. Ah, you see, so it's different, isn't it? Yes. Let's try this one here. Jeez, they're hot. Are they still hot? Yeah. Oh, they are, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, I'll tell you, let's go to diode test. And now, let's go black in the middle. It's okay, don't worry about it. Black in the middle. So, nothing. Something there. Hold right on now. Nothing. Okay, something there. But yet we've got something there. So these are these two are definitely testing different. Yeah. So what we now need to do is so they're suspected faulty. So I can just ask a question. Yeah. The, these are transistors, right? So they're like switches. I think so. Right. Now, do they just have a memory in them? So that be, be, uh, if, if if this was turned off oh, I see and they mean. were in different states when they were turned off, oh. will they retain that state once you've removed them? Uh, I don't know. I would say no because you have, uh, what is it, the source, drain and the gate, and I think you have to apply voltage to the gate in order to get the source and drain to connect. So they don't have a memory, they don't, I, they don't, I, they don't I, latch. I, I've, I don't know, and I've never heard anybody mention it. I would take a guess at no, okay. because I've never heard anybody mention right. that. But maybe they do, but I don't think they do. Okay. I don't, I don't think they do anyway. I know what you're saying, so you're thinking these might be on? Latched. And these might be latched off. Latched, yeah. yeah. I, I would say no, because when I've done testing in the past, nobody's mentioned that to me. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, put those there. So now, let's actually test the board itself. Let's take it off this tray. And now what we're hoping is that we haven't, that the shorts have now gone from here, I'm thinking. So let's... Uh, Go back to continuity again. Right, so now we've got nothing there, nothing there, nothing here, and here, nothing, and nothing. Just do the same here. No, okay. So uh, it's definitely testing different now that they're that they're out of circuit. So you never know, we might be lucky, and it might be just that those two have failed. Or, we could put two new ones in, and then maybe, uh, maybe they might blow straight away, because maybe something else that's feeding them has gone. Right, so I think what we should do is, I think we should have a look at the ones in here because we're going to have four in here. We could be unlucky, and maybe all four have failed, but maybe they haven't. And if they haven't, we might be able to use two, two of the ones from here in here, because this might have separate faults. Right, this is the other one here, and you can see on this one that it is blown. You see the blow mark there? And also, that's probably why it's taken all the components out around here. So that's gone. Now, annoyingly, these have a completely different number on them, and the number on these ones is FTP, 14N50C. So I don't even know if they are the same or not. So I'm going to look up the spec sheet for these and the other one, and then, you know, the, the, the other ones there, and see if they're the same. A bit more info, I'm looking up the MOSFET. So you know that we've got eight this side and four this side. Well, if you have a look, can you see that on this side, the 240 volts is this side of the board, and the 12 volts is this side of the board because it's this side of the transformers. So if you have a look underneath here, 
we've got the 12 volts coming in and you can see there's a clear divide down here between let's say the low voltage and the high voltage so unfortunately with us the MOSFETs have blown on the high voltage side so now I'm going to show you the difference between these MOSFETs and the MOSFETs from the burnt board right so these are the MOSFETs here on the the high voltage side the 240 volts and can you see here that it says the voltage is 400 volts. Now if we go to, because I was wondering if I could use the MOSFETs from the burnt board on our board that we want to fix, the board which has the bad fuses, the burnt fuses. And if you go to this data sheet here, can you see that the voltage here is 60? So that's why we've got the difference on the MOSFETs on both sides. The high voltage side is rated to 400 volts and the low voltage side is weight, uh, rated to 60 volts. So unfortunately, we can't just swap the MOSFETs over. So now, it's whether or not we can use the MOSFETs from the burnt board, 240 volt side, on the board that we actually want to fix. Now I'm just going to show you, I looked up how to test MOSFETs and it's actually quite interesting, so I want to film this bit here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I know which two are 40 because we've written F on the back. But look, I'm just going to mix them up now so we don't know which ones are 40. And then we'll actually see whether the testing on the multimeter in diode tests brings them up as 40 or not. And then I want to show you the ones on the burnt board because I believe the burnt board are all 40. So first of all, we're going to be putting our meter on diode test. So on this particular meter, it's this one here. And now we need to look up the spec of the MOSFETs. So if you, for example, have a look up here, you can see that it says GDS. So G is for gate, D is for drain, and S is for source. And it's the same on the other MOSFETs as well. So what we need to do is, in diode test, we need to put the black lead on the source, which is gonna be the right-hand one here, and then we're gonna be putting the red lead on the drain. So black lead on the source is gonna go here, and the red lead on the drain. And now if you look at my meter, it's open. Yeah, and now we're gonna do the same on the next one. And there you go, it's not open, it's reading something. So I think to begin with that that may be faulty. Now go to the next one. And again, that is reading something. No, sorry, black lead on the source, red lead on the drain. Again, that's reading something, so I think that might be faulty. And lastly, this one here. Black lead on the source, red lead on the drain. Nothing. So I think that these two are okay and these two are not. But now we're actually going to turn them on by using the lead from the meter to put voltage into them. So again, we're going to keep our black lead on the source, which is this one here. And now we're going to tap the gate with the red lead to put voltage into it like that and now that should have turned it on and now if we go here and look at my meter you can see now on the meter that there is actually a reading so now that MOSFET is on now if I get my finger and just short the leads you will see that it will go off not short the leads, short the leads off the MOSFET so now we can see that by tapping this it turns the MOSFET on then go to there we have a reading and then by tapping it with our fingers it turns it off again because it discharges itself. So I'm happy that that MOSFET is good. Now we're gonna do the other one that I think is good. So again, you can see that on the meter, there's no reading. Tap the gate, go back onto the drain in the middle, and we have a reading. So now we've turned that MOSFET on. Tap it with our finger, and it will go off. Yet on this one here, it doesn't make a difference whether it's on or off. So you can see that we've got a reading now. Tap it here go into the middle again, and you still see we've got a reading. If I short it with my fingers here, nothing happens. So I think 100% that particular MOSFET's 40, and let's do the same with this one here. There you go, got a reading, tap it, tap the gate, go back into the middle, and short it with my fingers, discharge it, nothing's happening. So again, I'm happy that those two are faulty. Now unfortunately, I've done the same with these ones here, and uh, it's not doing anything. So for example, obviously the one that's blown is obviously blown, but even if we were to go onto this one here, and this one here has the same gate, drain, and source, because I've looked up the data sheet, which is up here, if you have a look, again, G, D, S, and we're the right, right way round. Obviously don't do it upside down. So we've got the gate, drain, 
and the source here, so the drains in the middle. And if we just test this, I won't test them all, just take my word for it that they're not, uh, they're not doing anything. So again, we're going to do the black lead to the source and the red lead to the drain and we have a reading. And now when I go to turn it on by hitting the gate and go back here, we still have a reading. And then if I use my fingers to short out, can you see we've still got a reading. So it's not really making any difference whether we turn it on or off. So it looks like we need to buy two more of these and then see whether or not that fixes this inverter or not. Okay, so we have yet yeah, another inverter. I think my brother collects them. <laughs> so this one here looks a lot cheaply, well, it looks like it's definitely cheaply made, but it's got four MOSFETs on this side, which is on the, the 240 volt side again as well. And I've looked up the spec of them, and this one is a GDS, so gate drain source, which is the same as this one here. And I've looked up the spec on this one, and I've looked up the spec on this one, and they're both 400 volts, they're both 10 amps, there's so much spec on there that I don't really know what I'm looking at, but what I'm thinking about doing is, well not thinking, we're gonna do it. We're gonna unsolder two of the ones from here. We're gonna pop them into this one here, along with the other two good ones, and we're gonna turn it on. If it works, fantastic. I'll unsolder them back out of here, put them into here, and I'll order up the correct ones off eBay, because you can buy them. It's just that it'd be nice to kind of get this wrapped up today, whether it's working or not. If when we put them in from here into here, this one blows straight away. We know that there's something else in here causing the MOSFETs to blow and we can do a bit more fault finding and then I can order up the cheaper ones. These look like they're from China. You can only get them from China from what I've seen uh, from here. So we don't want to break this one because as far as we know, this one is actually working. But in order to test this one, we're going to do it because otherwise we have to wait for days for this to arrive. So that's what I'm going to do now. Those two MOSFETs have been replaced now. You can see they're the ones here with the heat pad here. Now what we're going to do is, because obviously it's dangerous and as well as that a lot of heat's going to be generated on these MOSFETs, we are going to just roughly put it back together and then we'll turn it on and we'll see. I'm really unsure whether this is going to work. I do know that these two were faulty. I'm just wondering has something else failed which caused these two to go faulty or is it just because they're switching so many times per second that, it's, uh, that they just, you know, <laughs> an easy component to fail. I hope that's the case, but you see one of these other things could have failed, which then knocked these out. Let's get it back together and test. Okay, so here we have the unit here, ready to turn on. And uh, yeah, we're going to connect up to the battery now. Now obviously there's nothing to protect us from here. So when we, we're not going to touch this, just in case something goes bang or... Well, one second, one second, here we go. So when we put it on there now, it won't go live until we put it here on, yeah? That's right. Yeah. Right, so let's see. Right, so far so good. So when we turn it on now, we're going to do it with the screwdriver. Oh! Whoa! Oh, so close! <laughs> Smoke! Oh no, we had the red light for about a second and a half. That's so annoying. So it's something else. It's something else. Now, I wonder... Well, how something's gone bang, so I know what it is now anyway. Well, that might be the fuses again, no? No, it's out the side. Oh, was it out the side, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well they're going to be the MOSFETs again, aren't yeah. they? So it's something causing... I can smell it. It's quite a nice smell, it's like fireworks, yeah. right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so are we going to know what's, uh, what's causing those MOSFETs to go? In fact, I can see little bits of smoke coming out here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from here, can you see? <laughs> they probably could be on fire right now. <laughs> uh, oh, what a shame. Oh, well, that is, that is a real shame. Well, we're going to take it apart and, and see what it is. Realistically, though, I know how hard it is working on power supplies and in a way this is kind of similar. I don't think we're going to be able to find out what's causing the short which is knocking out the MOSFETs. But let's take it apart just to see if something else has gone. Right, so we've got the lid off and yes, the fuses have blown. We just go uh, across each of them. See, there's nothing there. There's nothing on, nothing on any of them. So we've had a real good look around the board and also a good smell as well. And... Uh, we can't, uh, we can't see anything. The only thing is there's a slight bit of burning down here next to this resistor, but yet this resistor is still measuring, I can't remember now, I think it was three ohms or something. So it's still measuring something. I haven't looked at the color code, but apart from that, I can't see anything wrong with this board whatsoever. And unfortunately the two MOSFETs have now blown again. And also they took out another MOSFET as well. So let me show you the testing of the MOSFETs now. If you watch now, you can see here and here, 
that I'm getting a reading, put voltage into the gate, and I'm still getting a reading. Short it with my fingers, and it's still there. So 100% that MOSFET is faulty. And again with this one here, we're getting a reading, voltage into the gate, still getting a reading, short it, doesn't make a difference. So they're definitely faulty. I've taken all the MOSFETs off here now. And yeah, look, let's put our meter to continuity so you can hear it. Look, there's no... Uh, and if you look at the scale on the meter, it's not doing anything. So how can I find... I can't see how I'm going to be able to find this fault. So when I turn it on, the MOSFETs blow. Yet, when I take the MOSFETs off, they're nothing to indicate a fault on the board and yet when we put the MOSFETs on they blow so something's blowing the MOSFETs which is uh, which is strange and also when it comes to the transformer so if you have a look can you see this isolation between the high and the low so this side here is the high voltage this side is the low voltage and as far as I can see the only things that's joining it are the transformers and these little I think they're called octo couplers here these ones here and these are just done via light, I believe, because they're not going to be in contact between here and here. So obviously in the transformer, it's one coil and another coil. They're not touching each other. It's done by inductance. And these things are done by light. And if I go over here, so again, I'm just on continuity, but I've done it on resistance as well. And, uh, you know, they're not, these, as far as I can see, these haven't failed. I don't know how to test them. I've never tested them before, but there's definitely no direct short between them. And again, with the transformers, there's no, uh, there's no short between them. So I can see that they're here to here and here to here. And when I go, for example, you know, each side, they seem to be okay. But when I go from one side to the other, they're not, uh, they're not shorting. And when I go this side, they're not shorting. Also, these two are not connected. I don't know why. So I... Unfortunately, I can't take this one any further. I do not know how to fault find this one. So if you do know, please put it down in the comments below. Do you have to, do you have to put voltage into it in order to, to fault find it? So for example, if you put voltage in now without the MOSFETs in, would that be how, I mean, I wouldn't feel happy doing that, but I wonder, is that how a professional would do it or not? I don't know. So now the only thing left to do is see if we can get the little LED light working on the one remaining inverter, which is working. <laughs> and uh, we've got to get some MOSFETs now to fit the inverter that we borrowed the two MOSFETs from. But they are very cheap. You can get five of them from China for like £2.50. So they're not expensive. So we have to get that. I was thinking about just putting these MOSFETs in, the other two that were good. But annoyingly, in the last burning exercise that we just did, it also not only took out the two Chinese MOSFETs, it also took out one of the good MOSFETs as well. So right now we've only got one good MOSFET and we need two for the other one. So unfortunately today isn't going too well. So let's see if we can salvage anything by getting the little LED working here. So if you have a look when we turn it on here, the uh, light illuminates up here, but look, there's no power light on here. So let's take this one apart just to see if it's an LED or see if it's a, a bad solder joint or something. Let's see if we can get any fix done today. We're gonna have to take it out completely to have a good look. I think now our luck may have changed. So we've been tracing the wires back from this green LED. They go up to these connections here. And I was tracing it down to here, which is basically a chip. Chips on that side there. And then the negative goes into this area here, which is where the USB port is. And then I was looking around the place and look at what I spotted here. A funny looking wire sticking out. Can you see it here? Where's it gone? Here. So if we give it a wiggle from the other side, can you see it coming and going here? And look where this one goes to. So this goes all the way up here. All the way up here is the thick one here and it goes into this connection here. This connection goes into this bit on the board that looks like a bit of an afterthought that comes out there. And then from there, it then goes back out. Well, it goes into this board here, but then also look at the wires from this board here. You've got a red and a yellow, which go up to this area here, which is right next to the light. And now if we follow where the red and the yellow goes to, so the yellow I think is this one here. And then it just goes up to here. Looks like it goes into the four pins of the USB. But the other one, 
the orangey sort of coloured one there goes down and it looks like it comes up here which then travels to here to there through this resistor to the LED so I'm hoping that when we solder this it will start working and then also what we've done is because we thought I wonder is that making a contact anyway we've gone through uh, from the little connection here right the way to this whole pad here and we haven't got a connection yet when we pull this wire tight we then have a connection so I think in the factory look it was soldered nicely in like that but there wasn't much wire coming through and then it's probably just broken instantly because it doesn't look like it looks like the wire was just just about hanging on in there and now it's there but the actual wire there isn't broken it's just sort of popped out because there's not enough solder onto it so we're going to push that right the way through solder it up and then fingers crossed we might have fixed something and it will be a more interesting fix than just swapping the led over That wire is now soldered back on, so now, fingers crossed, let's put this back together and hopefully that green light will light up. So this was the offending red wire here, which is now soldered in deep in here, and you can see it goes through here into this one here, and then this connector through this board here goes down to the USB. I'm wondering whether this was just an add-on, so maybe this model's been around for a while, and then they did an add-on for the USB, just to make it a little bit more modern, and would that board be purely for the USB? to take the power down from 12 volts to 5 that volts. Board, you mean? This board, yeah. yeah. To take it from 12 volts to 5 volts. What have we got there? We've got an inductor, a diode, a couple of capacitors. I bet you that's what that board's for. Right, so we're gonna pop the bottom back on, do all the screws up, and then see if this light is working. All back together, now let's see. We're gonna flip the switch, see if it turns on without having the plug in. So, uh, here we go. Yes, we've done it. We've done something for all day today. long, two people. For a green light, but it was worth it. All right, let's search. Uh, we plug in the light just to make sure the inverter's still working. I think it might be wise yeah, to yeah. turn them off before we plug it in. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a slow start. There, there we go. Excellent. Well, look, I'm happy that that green light's working. So that is. It's amazing what I will cling to, but I am calling that a success. I have been working on this just on my own, and I've actually put many, many, many more hours into this. I've got closer. It will now turn on, but then after about maybe 10 seconds or so, it has this real high pitch beep. But I don't really know what it means. I think it means it's overloaded. So when I leave it off here and put power into it, it's fine. It doesn't just blow up instantly. But when I put power into it and turn it on here, obviously I'm keeping my hands well away from it because we're dealing with high voltages. Then I'll show you in a second now. There's a serious amount of noise. It's a bit of a shame really because I did find quite a few more faulty components. So we already knew the MOSFETs were faulty. And uh, when I did further testing on other components, I looked closely and I seen actually some of the transistors had blown. Can you see there? Big chunks out the side of it. And also you see these little diodes here. The diodes were also completely shorted as well. And I think that's the problem when you're dealing with high voltage stuff like this, especially like high current stuff as well. When one thing goes, I think it just takes out a load of other components as well. So right now I've changed four uh, transistors over and also two diodes and four MOSFETs and it's still not working so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna touch that red lead just on the corner of this positive of the battery here so you can just hear what it sounds like I'll also angle this up here but unfortunately now I do have to call it a day on this because I've just spent a huge amount of time on something which you can buy for well, they're not overly expensive. I think you can get second-hand ones on eBay working for £30. So it's probably not, obviously, it's not worth spending days and days on it. And as well as that, not that I've spent a lot of money, but all these transistors and MOSFETs, they all add up to a little bit. Not much, 
but still we're talking about pounds rather than pennies. So uh, let's uh, yeah, let's get the camera mounted and I'll show you what's happening. Are you ready now? So let's turn off some lights so you can actually see that the red light is lighting up. Right, so we're looking at this light here, okay? Ready? I'm touching it now. Red light's on. And there we go. And also, there's no fan spin, but I think the fan might only spin when it, uh, when it starts working. Also, if I plug something into that, it doesn't work. So right now, I'll turn it off, I'm gonna get the light on it, plug it in, and I'll show you that the light is not working. Power on to it now. Okay, light on. Turn it on here, doesn't make any difference at all, doesn't come on, and then alarm comes off until I take this off here. So that's it, unfortunately it's time to give up on this particular one here. Not one to give up, I am now working on the burnt one. So I got some isopropyl alcohol, gave it a really good clean, swapped out the opto coupler thing from this one over here. But apart from that, I just put new components in everywhere else. So we've got one, two, three, four, transistors changed over. I've also had to pop a resistor in there. That resistor is not in this one over here. That's just replaced with a link. But this one had a resistor. I don't know what value it was because it's completely and utterly burnt. It was just a lump of char. So what I've done is I've just put a 15 ohm one in because I'm thinking if the other one's working on a direct link, which is going to be like, you know, under one ohm or zero ohms, then uh, 15 ohm might be okay, but that is just a pure guess. So now I'm going to get the phone up on, uh, get the camera up on a tripod, and uh, let's see, let's see the fireworks. All right, here we go. Slightly nervous, not going to lie. Right, at this moment in time, it is off. So I just want to see if it goes bang. Oh, I need to put fuses in. Just give me one minute. Okay, fuses are in. Now I'm going to stand back because there's no cover on this. Right, so negative lead on. See now what it's going to do. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Excellent. Right, it hasn't gone bang, but remember it's not on. But there's no, no bang when it goes into it. Right, okay, release that now. Just going to turn this on here. Okay. The red light just there, the green light just went on for a second. Now, oh, I am nervous. Right, here goes. I'm going to put my hood up. Just to protect part of my face and my ears, just in case components go flying. Right, here goes now. Green light's on. The green light is on and there's no noise as of yet. Oh, there we go. Now it's gone to the red light. But, what's that say? Warning. I wonder could that have just overheated because I haven't got the case on. Ooh. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to whack it in its case just to, just to see. Maybe those MOSFETs got very hot very quickly there. Or it could just be like the other one where it just beeps after 10 seconds. Let me get it back in the case. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before in this video, but when I go to that now, the, those massive two caps there will have a load of voltage in them. But what happens is, if you just, when I put my meter on it, it just goes down and down and down and down and down. So I've only got to leave it a couple of minutes and then it seems to be dead. But if you're ever messing with this yourself, just make sure because there is high voltage in those two big caps. Right, here we go, all back together. I've put everything back together, all the screws and everything, because I'm not going to be taking this any further now, because I don't know what to do after this. Uh, do I think it's going to work? I don't know. I don't think those MOSFETs would have overheated that quickly, and it seemed to be about the same amount of time as the other one. But uh, still, let's, uh, let's see. So I'm going to put the negative one on, and I suppose I better... Just rest this. Shall I try putting it on here fully? Yeah, let's put it on here fully. Okay, now. Uh, screwdriver. Okay, got power there. Now wait probably about 10 seconds, it will start uh, doing the warning. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what I'm going to do, just out of curiosity, is I'm going to get a light, I'm going to plug it in here. In fact, I can use one of my studio lights. Let's get this light here, plug it in, just to see if in those seconds it, uh, it works or not. So it looks like that. This has the exact same fault as the other one, which is weird, because originally they had different faults. Remember, this was the one... Uh, this was the one that was... Uh, this wasn't blowing the fuses. Actually, I just need to make sure I don't know what's off and on on my lights. I don't... 
Okay, so I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to turn the light on here. You'll see it's a massive light that will light up the whole the whole place here. So here we go. Right, on light on there and on here. No, nothing there at all. Sorry, and now that will start beeping again. Right, okay. I, I can't take it any further. But what is the matter with these? I reckon maybe this could be a revisit because I've got both of them now behaving exactly the same way. So the warning light's coming on even though they're now getting power. So I feel that progress has been made, but we're still no nearer to having a working inverter. So what I'm going to do now is the MOSFETs have arrived to change over, to put back in the, the one that we took apart, the working one that we took apart, to try and fix these ones. So let's get the MOSFETs back in there, and at least then we're not worse than we were before. The replacement MOSFETs have arrived from China for this working one that we then broke. So popped in two of them and turned it on and we were just using the power supply over there and although the fan was wearing, wearing away nothing was coming out and that confuses me because this needs 12 volts to work and that thing can pump out 30 volts at 10 amps and I've got it set to 12 volts at 10 amps but it's not working yet when I put it on the big battery there it works fine we're just powering a little light here so that's a question for my viewers I'm thinking is it because even 10 amps, does this need to start it up much more than 10 amps to get going? Because watch this now, if I turn this on, take my word for it that I've got it set to 10 amps, you can see there it's nearly 12 volts, and uh, if I turn this on here, it was away, but there's no little green light on. And of course, if I turn this light on here, there's nothing coming out. Yet yeah, now I'm just gonna put the camera down and I'm gonna put the, these leads here back onto the battery. So now we've got the leads on the battery there, and now watch, if I turn it on here, you can see, green light comes on and the light is now on. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that just 10 amps from that, even though we haven't got a big load here, I'm thinking this must need more than 10 amps. Or is that pumping out something different than the battery's pumping out? So if you know the answer to that, if you could just pop it down in the comments below. So unfortunately that's it for this video, really one big failure and not much to be learned out of what was there. There was three of them, so the only thing we actually got working was the fact that one of them didn't have the light working. That was kind of interesting. Uh, and at least we've got this one working again. So we're not actually any worse off than we were before, apart from the time taken. We're slightly better off because we've got one with a working light now. So that is it for this video. If you got any enjoyment from it at all, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more Trying to Fix videos. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.